Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Arevalo, and I will be uh, talking to you guys about minimum wages. I understand there was somebody else that did that already. I wasn't here during it, but sorry if you hear the same things over again. <clears throat> All right, um, just to go over a few things, not questioning anybody's knowledge. Um, inflation is basically uh, the raise, uh, or the lower of the value of our dollar, and the more output of money throughout our economy to balance that out, and the price is going up, which are inflation. And uh, minimum wage is basically uh, the minimum amount that companies can pay their employees by the hour. An introduction would be over um, information that I pulled from the United States Department of Labor, Wages and Divisions. In uh, 1978 to 1997, minimum wages went from 265 to 515. That's about a 194% increase in about 20 years, which is, I guess you can say, a steady increase. But in recent years, from 2007 to 2018, minimum wage went from 585 to between 11.50 and 15 dollars an hour, depending on where in the states you are. Now that's, if you can't do the math, is a 256% increase in almost half the time it took in between uh, 78 and 97. That's about 10 years. That's also almost three times the amount of the minimum wage increase. And that is where it's gonna affect us negatively. And my speech will be about how minimum wage increasing will negatively affect society. I'll be going over how it'll affect small businesses, families, and employees themselves. <coughs> First of all, raising minimum wage will be a negative effect on small businesses because uh, small businesses will either have to lay off employees or raise their prices or both to keep up with the minimum wages that they have to pay their employees. Um, a, an article by Casey, Casey Lin, she interviews Ahmed Ijaz, an economic researcher at the University of Alabama Center of Business and Economy Research. He said, federal minimum wage increase will have pros and cons, which I already told you guys. Uh, the negative is that it will raise the cost for the employers, causing them to either lay off their workers or raise the prices. And that's coming from the researcher at Alabama, which has more credentials than I do. <laughs> um, basically, the small businesses are more affected. It's small businesses and anybody that's hiring uh, minimum wage, so fast food, uh, retail stores, anything like that. Another article that would uh, be an example of this by Alexander Clinton, a writer of New Yorker, or New, New American in Seattle, sorry, interviewed business owners during the $15 increase in Seattle. And uh, one of the business owners, Chuck Stempler, owner of Alpha Graphics franchise in Seattle, is actually, was actually suing federal court to overturn Seattle's new higher wages. And he was suing because he had to lay off a lot of employees. And by this, he had less people to work for the amount of money that he had to sell his stuff for, therefore almost bankrupting his company. Going off that, small businesses might also be bankrupt having to deal with the higher wages. Higher minimum wages um, will also affect smaller, uh, smaller income homes, families that are working off minimum wage. People may say that um, smaller income homes will benefit because they're getting more money in their pocket, but at the same time, it's directly related to the inflation of prices that uh, Smaller income homes will be depending on um, buying their essential foods, or if they're working on small income, they most likely don't have time to make food, and they're going off of fast food, like what I did when I was growing up. <laughs> and um, fast food prices are definitely gonna go up, because who works at fast food places? Teenagers and everybody in minimum wage, right? So those prices are definitely gonna increase. I don't know how much, but with a $15 increase from, from uh, $11, you can uh, bet that it will be a higher rate. 
minimum wage goes up every few years. Says Lee from uh, another article. Um, when, uh, when in California, we just go up to $15 an hour. Living expenses, um, including housing, will, may also increase due to um, real estate agencies having to pay more on the taxes or more on the properties that they're paying for, therefore having to sell at higher rates. And not only just houses and um, apartments and small condos as well. So these low-income families are going to have to face that as well. So most people in low-income housing don't live at the same place for a long time. And if they do, it's because they've had the place for, for over 15 or 20 years and they're paying a lower rate. But um, that's not the case for most families. They're, they're probably paying um, 1800 for like a two-bedroom or one-bedroom apartment. And that's a lot living off of $11 an hour. Um, now, also minimum wages will um, affect employees negatively because of how they will be responding to how they're getting paid. Minimum wage employees work off of minimum wage and they, uh, not, as, not a lot is expected out of them, but when they get a pay increase from $11 to $15, they may feel like they, uh, they're entitled more or that they, their work is not as, uh, not as much value because they're getting paid $15 an hour just to show up or just to uh, throw some fries in the fryer. Uh, I can give that personal experience because um, I, uh, I manage a grocery store called La Carreta Supermarket. It's a Spanish grocery store. Don't look it up because if you go over there, I'm probably going to act like I don't know you. And uh, when the minimum wage went up just from $10 to 1050, I saw that in a lot of the employees, um, a, lot, a lot of them stopped working as much or as hard because they, they felt like they got a pay raise and they did nothing for it. Or that's at least how I felt with uh, how they were acting. Uh, and not only that, um, it affected our company's income. Um, our our target group would be uh, low-income Hispanic families, but when it, when it increased, we actually saw at least a 15% decrease in sales. We sell about 30,000 a day, and it went down to like 26, 27 dollars, 27,000 a day. And uh, for at least three or four months, when everybody had time to adjust, uh, the store was empty, and we were even uh, cutting hours like on a regular basis. My job list went from Check, check employees' uniform safety and departments to check employees' uniform safety department, hour sales, and cut hours every day. And it went from, oh, who's getting their hours cut this week? This person, oh no, he got his hours cut yesterday, so we're only gonna cut this person's hours. And we would probably cut like uh, 60 hours a day out of um, maybe 80 employees, but it was, it was quite a bit. Um, but that's the end of my speech. Thank you guys for listening. One guy who did a similar thing on minimum wages, I don't think he went over inflation. Did he? Well, the subject's the minimum wage, and you offer a couple of definitions. It takes you a while to get to your proposition, which is that increasing the minimum wage is going to increase uh, negative effects. 
Uh, you've done something that I think I've mentioned to people before that's a little bit problematic. You stated your proposition as if it is an expository statement instead of a declarative statement. I'm going to explain how minimum wage increases will result in this negative effect. When you're, it's a declarative statement, minimum wage increases will have this negative effect. And there's a difference between that. You know, an expository speech is an explanatory speech. A declarative speech, it makes an inference and an argument, and that's what you're supposed to do. So the language has to be something that you clean up a little bit, and you do that you know, on a couple of the secondary points as well. Uh, there is a preview of what the supporting structure is going to be. Uh, you do have that supporting structure. I think the signposts in the body of the speech could be a little bit clearer. Uh, there's good information on the first point concerning the small businesses. You had some interesting statistical information about the period of time from uh, 78 to 97 and then uh, from that, that period of time when recently when the minimum wage went up 256 uh, percent. So I thought that that was uh, good information to use on that first point. Uh, the impact on employment is a little bit harder to figure out. We don't have any data on unemployment or the number of companies that uh, decrease the number of workers there. I think that you needed more of that kind of information. You did have some, a little bit of that, for instance, in your third point when you're talking about your personal experience. Um, I'm sure that there's other information that goes along with that. You had the one example of the guy who's suing, for instance. That, I think, uh, probably is a, a good illustration of that particular point. The inflation issue um, needs to be developed a little bit more as well. The impact of the minimum wage increases on inflation needs to be measurable in some way. Uh, it's kind of speculative here that in the long run people are going to be affected because they're going to have to pay more for certain kinds of things, but how much more? It's very hypothetical. Um, you, you get this whole discussion of what uh, might be happening with a, uh, a potential apartment that somebody has, and all you really have here is the hypothetical. I'm sure that there's some kind of data that would be relatable to this. What the spending power is going to be, how it would be affected by whatever inflation occurs as a result of increasing the minimum wage. Uh, I think you need a little bit better data on that. The, the last point, the impact on the employer, there's a lot of overlap between this and the first point, which I'm, you know, maybe you don't really need to have it as a separate point. Uh, maybe it's just as a sub point on that first point. Uh, the personal experience here helps a little bit with your ethos, although telling us that you wouldn't even recognize us if we come into your store, that doesn't really build your ethos very much with this particular audience. <laughs> uh, I think that's you know, kind of going the opposite direction there. So you want to be uh, careful about that. Like I said, it's, it's reasonably solid information. You go way over time, by the way. I'll just mention that you were 2 minutes and 43 seconds over time. So it's like you got an extra 50% in on your speech. Uh, we won't be allowing that to happen when the debates occur. All right. Thank you.